it's actually four key component parts. Culture, and it's about how an organisation can embrace digital technology to change itself as well as what it does. The processes that are used internally to create things and um, to, to work operationally. The tools that we use to do that. But most of all, and probably most importantly, it's about mindset. It's about thinking about things differently. The technology um, is out there, and if the organisations are willing to invest in it, that's not a problem. The real issue is bringing the people with you so that the organisation is fit for purpose in terms of the, the staff that it has and that the working culture is right. When you consider digital transformation, it's all about people. It's all about how people go about doing their jobs in order to deliver business success. And the more that I've got into it, the more I've realised that this is about taking barriers away from people and giving people really the tools for them to do what they need to do to the best of their ability. So from my perspective, digital is becoming more and more important. From a charity perspective, it's becoming absolutely critical because it's about how we connect with our people. It's about how we connect with the people that we're here for, but also the people who are giving us the vital funds in order to make a difference. Taking the initiative at a top level to do it, that means hard decisions, really easily said, very difficult to do because there's a conflict of priorities. It's not like charity leaders have been sat on their laurels just letting things tick along. There's a huge number of things involved in keeping the established charities going. There were a lot of things restricting what we were doing. So we started to actually think about well, what is the point of the move? What is the culture that we want from our people? And the viewpoint was that we don't want people sat at our desks. We don't want people shying away from actually the people that we're here for and the people that we need to network with and raise money with. We want our people to be out there. And the real question came back to is actually, we want our people to be able to access their work wherever they are and however they're working, but still get the same feel for it. What it will do is it will probably bring great efficiencies of scale for you, enable your resources, your people to work in better ways, be more positive about their work and those are sort of soft benefits that it's not always easy for leadership to understand straight away. So it's very easy to be in a position where you think this is going to cost a lot of money but we're not going to make any money from it. But in fact, it's about setting yourself up for a much more flexible approach to um, the organisation as a whole going forwards. We are really seeing that by changing how our people work, it's having a huge impact on how we're connecting with our audience and therefore the service that we deliver. So instead of a mentality of, well, they must come to us and we will then provide it, we are really changing our viewpoints being out with our service users because the tools are helping people get out there, not be a barrier to people getting out there. The problem with cystic fibrosis is there's an issue with cross-infection and somebody with cystic fibrosis can never meet somebody else with cystic fibrosis. That means when we want to connect with our community, it can't be in a physical environment. It takes uh, a real standout digital project to be that kind of light bulb moment that switches everyone on to the power and the impact that digital can have in terms of influence, brand awareness and so on. For us that has definitely been um, our work around ending the awkwardness around disability. I have definitely seen since I've been at Scope teams really changing the way that they want to communicate coming to digital, people like our policy team will now come to digital and to find out the best way to promote the research that they're doing to get a high profile amongst influencers and so on. So we've seen some really positive changes in the way that digital is perceived and the way that people think they can use digital. I've seen examples where um, the aim has been to put in a change in the way of working before you bring in the technology. So actually analysing how people use the space and the building and the ways that they want to work long before you make any decisions about technology. And I think that is probably the best approach because then you're able to establish with the people themselves what's the best way for them to actually work and what technology do they need. We need to go right back to people's job descriptions, the way that we recruit people, um, the way that we train and support them and the way that we manage their personal development so that digital isn't just seen as something that the digital team do. Really this shift is often talked about as being a technology change, it's not, it's a people and audience behaviour change that we're trying to keep up with. 
So you do need that expertise. Where I think digital teams have fallen down is that they've allowed themselves to be kept in these boxes and they've become defensive and they've tried to own digital too much. It's a natural behaviour when you're working within a team environment but I think there's a realisation and lots of the digital experts I know who work in charities will say this themselves that actually they would be happier being out in the rest of the organisation they've reached a point where they no longer wish to be you know a director at holding on to digital skills usually overburdened by too many requests um, so I think there's change on both sides and the core of that is making digital something where there is a heart of expertise but actually the skills are across the charity not all in one place. We're seeing silos really being broken down and um, from my view that unless people in IT are closely joined you cannot make the leaps that we have currently seen as part of our organisation and I genuinely think that some of the cultural changes that we've gone through whilst partly linked to a move is because we've turned digital transformation on its head and made it a tool for people to get out there and use. And I think now, seeing it being bedded down, now we've been here for about four to six months, you're really seeing a different energy and vibe in the workplace, and that is because of digital transformation aiding rather than preventing some of those cultural needs. Organisations like Macmillan have been extremely successful in taking digital skills across their organisation. So, for example, they made digital upskilling the key part of their you know, first stage of digital transformation and they've now trained I think a thousand people in the organisation in social media skills. The difference between having what they had before, three social media editors, and a thousand staff who have social media skills is pretty easy to understand what the impact of something like that can be and that's just one thing. One of the big things for me is about joining people in IT together and I'm having so many conversations from an IT perspective where HR is not at the table and actually if you really want to get good skills conversations, if you want to be thinking about who you're recruiting, if you want to think about succession planning, to actually make digital transformation here to last for the long term, those conversations need to be joined up. The only way digital makes an impact is through people and therefore it's about getting your people stories lined up in the first place to actually go out and deliver it. Yeah, I think digital transformation isn't something that has a start and a finish necessarily. I think that it's, it's something that if you undertake it correctly, it puts you in a flexible position so that you can continue to adapt over time. If you take the example of the way people use their mobile phones these days, um, there's constantly upgrading, they're constantly changing bits and pieces of it, but it's still essentially a mobile phone. Digital transformation is very much like that. I, I don't see it as being uh, you, you, buy, you buy your digital transformation and then you just keep it forever. Essentially, you have to keep moving. But to get yourself into that position, first of all, where you can continually upgrade and adapt according to the changing environments is, is the way to, to start it. Digital generally has moved so much just in the last 10 years that there's no point trying to estimate where it's going to be in the next five to 10 years anymore. You just have to be able to anticipate much more short-term change than you used to have to do with the more traditional ways of working. And that's why digital transformation, I think, is really important in terms of just creating the right environment for you to be continually adapting to a changing world.